We are so glad that you're here to worship with us this morning on this Mother's Day Sunday. Happy Mother's Day to all. Uh, we hope that you have a great day and are able to connect with your family, uh, wherever they may be. We thank you for all that you have done, the blessing that you have had uh, in our lives. Uh, a special happy Mother's Day to, to Rachel and, and my mom uh, for all that they continue to do and the love that they show to our families. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, let's open this morning uh, in a word of prayer and hearing our opening scripture this morning. Uh, we're going to pray uh, just after we hear our scripture. Uh, so which of you would read along with me. I'm hoping it's going to be on the screen. So uh, we're going to read from Psalm 31 this morning together. Psalm 31, 1 to 5. Uh, in you, Lord, I have taken refuge. Let me never be put to shame. Deliver me in your righteousness. Turn your ear to me. Come quickly to my rescue. Be my rock and my refuge, a strong fortress to save me. Since you are my rock and fortress, for the sake of your name, lead and guide me. Keep me free from the trap set for me, and you are my refuge. Into your hands I commit my spirit. Deliver me, O Lord. Let us pray together. Gracious God, thank you for all that you have done in our lives. We thank you for your presence and that we can put our trust in you in all things. We give you great give you praise for the grace that you put in our lives. We thank you for those who have been our mothers, whether they be our natural or adopted, our mothers that have just come into our lives to care for us. We thank you for all those, those ladies uh, who have been there. And we ask, Lord, that you put blessings on their lives. Uh, we ask this all, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. This morning, we're going to begin by singing uh, Joyful, uh, the One Who Saves. Join with me this morning. Joyful, joyful, we adore you, God of glory, Lord of love, hearts unfold like flowers before Son above. Melt the clouds of sin and sadness, drive the dark of doubt away, give a of eternal gladness, fill us with the light of day. You are the one who saves, you are the one saves. You are the one whose hands lift us from the grave. You are the light of life, the everlasting day. You are the one who takes all our sin away. You are giving and forgiving ever blessed fountains of the joy of living ocean depth of happy rest you are the one who saves you are the one who saves you are the one whose hands lift us from the grave you are the light last day you are the one who takes all our sin away Jesus you are my rescue Jesus you are my rescue I give you everything I am Jesus you are my rescue, Jesus, you are my rescue, I give you everything I am. You are the one who saves, you are the one who saves, you are the one whose hands lift us from the grave. You are the light of life, the 
everlasting day You are the one who takes all our sin away It is so true that we can be joyful uh, that God takes our sin away and that we have the grace of God that covers all of our sin and lifts us from the grave, not only the physical grave, but the graves uh, that we often live in, uh, the graves that hold us down. We are freed from those. And so this morning, uh, let's continue by singing to God be the glory. glory great things he has done so loved he the world that he gave us his son who yielded his life and atoned for sin and opened the life gift that all may go in praise the lord praise the lord let the earth hear his voice praise the lord praise the lord let the people rejoice. Oh, come to the Father through Jesus the Son and give him the glory, great things he hath done. Till perfect redemption, the purchase of blood to every believer, the promise of God, the vilest offender who truly believes, a moment of transport from pardon receives. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the earth hear his voice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the people rejoice. Oh, come to the Father through Jesus the Son and give him the glory, great things he has done. The things he hath taught us, great things he has done, and great are rejoicing through Jesus the Son. But purer and higher and greater will be our wonder, our transport when Jesus we see. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the earth hear his voice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the people rejoice. Oh, come to the Father through Jesus the Son and give him the glory, great things he hath done. Then as we come to our time of prayer this morning, I encourage you, if you'd like to share a prayer request on the comment section, please do so, and we'll be sharing those and lifting those up. Uh, but also to remember that in all that we do, it is our hope in God that, that sees us through and that lifts our souls up. Uh, so let's sing this morning as we prepare our hearts for prayer. My hope is you. Show me your way, guide 
truly put our hope in God in all of life's varied circumstances. Uh, through the good times, through the bad times, we know that God is there present with us, that God lifts us up and walks with us in all of all things that, that happened. Uh, let us uh, share in a time of prayer this morning. I encourage you as you can to, sh to uh, lift before you those prayer needs that you have on your hearts, uh, prayer needs that may have been shared uh, with you this week. Uh, prayers that uh, you have in your prayer brochure, if you have that be in front of you this morning. So let us pray together as we lift before God the needs that are around us. Would you join me in prayer? Gracious God, thank you for all that you have done in us and continue to do in us uh, through, the, through the word, through all that you have, that you have given to us. Lord, we know that your spirit continues to work in us. Your spirit continues to be with us in all things. Lord, we do pray that your hand will guide and direct us. We pray that you will, will continue to be with us uh, through the different things of life. Uh, Lord, we just ask that as we continue in worship this morning, you will uh, guide and direct us that you will speak to our hearts and our minds in ways that uh, we can only imagine. We know that your spirit does these things for us. Uh, Lord, we lift before you the needs that are around us, uh, the needs for healing, the needs for protection. Uh, we pray, Lord, for those who are dealing with illness and recovering from all sorts of different illnesses and diseases. Uh, we, Lord, we lift before you those who are fighting cancer, who are dealing with chronic pain, who are recovering from pneumonia, accidents. Lord, we lift them all before you for your healing and your touch of grace. Lord, we pray for the families in our midst, families who are struggling, um, some to make ends meet. We pray, Lord, that you will provide and find ways uh, in which this, our church and the churches here in Dallas can respond Lord, we just thank you for all that you have given us and the blessings that, that we have. And may we share those with those around us. Lord, we do pray for our community and for our state and for our country as we seek the best path uh, to move forward. We just ask for your wisdom, a wisdom that is, is peace-loving, that is encouraging, that is beneficial to all. Lord, we just ask for uh, you to be with our leaders, that you do provide them wisdom, that you do allow us to, to do what we need to do to be safe uh, in so many ways. Gracious God, continue with us this morning, or better yet, may we continue with you as you lead and guide us as we receive from you grace and mercy, as we try to live our lives in accordance with your spirit and your guidance. And Lord, we ask all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. So this morning, we're going to read uh, from the Gospel of John. We're going to read chapter 14, uh, several verses from chapter 14, and talk about what it means uh, to have Jesus uh, as our way, our truth, and our life, not not so much after death, as this scripture is often used for uh, at funerals and such, but in our daily lives as we go about the different things that we go through. So if you have your Bibles with you, go ahead and turn to, to uh, John chapter 14, or follow along as we, read, as we read together this morning. 
not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. My Father's house are many rooms. If that were not so, I would have told you that I am going there to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me that you may be where I am. You know the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you're going. How can we know the way? Jesus answered, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you really know me, you will know my Father as well. From now on, you do, not know, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said, Lord, show us the Father, and that will be enough for us. Jesus answered, Don't you know me, Philip? After all, after I have been among you for such a long time, anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. So often this scripture is, is used at, at funerals. The, the do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God. Trust also in me. Um, and I think it's very appropriate to be used at funerals and to, to receive that comfort from, from our faith uh, in times of trouble. As I read that, this scripture this week, I was very aware of the troubled hearts that we have in our communities and our, our nation that we're going through these times and our hearts are troubled because of them. Sometimes our hearts are troubled because of the loneliness that we face from being isolated and, and distanced from one another. Sometimes our hearts become troubled because of the, the struggle of, to make ends meet. Sometimes our hearts are troubled uh, because of the different things that uh, we're, we're facing from day to day, the struggles of the uncertainty. Uh, sometimes our hearts are troubled be, not because of anything that is done or, or has to do with the, the COVID-19 virus, but because of the, the world we live in, a world of violence, a world of hatred, a world that is full of uh, just violent acts that are around us. Our hearts become troubled because we see so much brokenness around us. And so I wondered what this scripture has to say to us not because of death and grief alone, but because of the life that we live. I think it has a lot to say to us. It has a lot to say to our faith. It has a lot to say to us as we go forward, as we do the different things that, that we're called to do in our lives. So I want you to think for a moment, uh, because I believe that Scripture is, is very personal and meets us where we're at. Think for a moment about where your heart is troubled this morning. Think for a moment about where you may, may feel brokenness in your own life, where you may see brokenness and troubled hearts in your family, where you may see troubledness and broken hearts in your, your community, in our state, in our country, and around the world. There is so much that is, is around us. Yet Jesus says, do not let your hearts be troubled. Do not let your hearts be troubled. And that is such a hard thing, hard thing for us to do. Maybe something easy for us to hear. But a lot harder for us to do. Kind of similar to what Jesus says earlier in the Gospel of Matthew. He says, do not worry. Well, it's easy to hear, much more difficult to do. But Jesus says, do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in me, for I am the way, the truth, and the life. I am the way to the Father. In me, you see the Father. In me, you know the Father. And for me, that, that's very comforting. That's very comforting, and it's very important for us to hear in these times, in any time of our life, where we feel our hearts being troubled. Where do we see the comfort that Jesus offers us? Where do we see the things that Jesus gives to us that are comforting, that are uplifting, that, are, that help our faith in so many ways? Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. 
the way, the truth, and life. I think as we read these scriptures, we focus on those three words, and oftentimes we look to those as afterlife, as eternal life, words, and directions. Yet, as I said before, I think these, those three words in this whole section talks a lot to our, our current situation and the life is that we live each day. Jesus says, I am the way. When we follow Jesus, we follow him in a very certain way of life. In fact, that's the way that the early church was called originally, was, was the way. Because they lived in a different way. So when you and I trust in Jesus as our way of life, we see a way that is very different than the world around us. We see a way in which we live that is full of peace, that sees people very differently than the world around us may see them. We see people who are created in God's image. They may not look like us or be like us or, or live like us, but they are created in God's image. So we need not fear them. We need not fear the world around us. Jesus calls us to live in a different way, in a way that is, that is uh, in following him and living the way in which he lived and in dealing with people and talking with people and being with people in the way in which he did. He was not afraid to step out of the, the norms or the practices of life and, and to be with people that other people would, wouldn't have anything to do with. Whether it was the woman at the well whether it was the lepers, whether it was the tax collectors, the prostitutes, those people who were on the fringes of society, he was not afraid to be with them. He stepped out of those norms of life and lived in a different way. But Jesus also says, I am the way, the truth. I am the truth. Oftentimes around us, we see so much, so many lies, so many things that guide us down the wrong path. So many things that people are saying that uh, I am the right way or you have to do things my way. But Jesus says, I am the truth. I will show you the truth of any situation I believe Jesus would say to us. This morning in Sunday school, we talked about a passage from James chapter 3 where, where James talks about the spiritual wisdom, a wisdom that is not self-centered or self-ambitious, self-centered, but a wisdom that focuses upon righteousness, upon peacemaking, upon encouraging, upon grace and mercy, a wisdom that, that in whatever decision we make, whatever choice we make, if it fulfills those characteristics, if it, if it is peacemaking, if it is full of mercy, if it is gracious, then righteousness will come. Righteousness will bloom and be, uh, will flower like the flowers that are, we see around us. And that is the truth that Jesus speaks of. Are our decisions, our actions full of those things that Jesus talks about or that James talks about in, in James chapter 3? Or are they full of selfish ambitions? Are they full of, of things that, that focus on ourselves or the things that uh, are, bring us selfish needs, bring our needs into selfish focus? But Jesus also says, I am the life. And I think it is that life that, that we live is not only the, the eternal life of, of the afterlife, but is also focused upon the life that we live here today. I think that it is important that we live a godly and righteous life today and that we live our life according to the way and the truth that Jesus gives to us. And when we do so, our lives will be so different as individuals, as the church, and for the different things that we go through. That people will see us and wonder, what is different about us? Why are we living this different life? Just like the early church went through, 
People saw the way they lived, saw the way they cared for people, saw the way in which their lives were changed because of their faith. And therefore, they wanted to be a part of it. They saw something different, something not just unique, but uh, life-changing. And so they wanted to be a part of it. Jesus says, don't let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God, trust also in me. I am the way, the truth, and the life. Those three words, so often talked about at funerals, but so often are important for our daily lives today. Jesus shows us the way. He gives us the truth. And in doing so, he gives us a new life to live each day. A new life to live that is so different from the world around us. So, uh, some people have called it a peculiar life because it is so different. Yet, when we live that life, when we live that new creation, that born-again life, that life that is so different from the world around us, that is characterized by Uh, good fruit of our lives as Paul says uh, peace, patience, kindness goodness, faithfulness self-control or as James talks about uh, peacemaking encouraging mercy characteristics like that when we have those in our lives in ever increasing measure we will be living the life that Jesus gives to us We will be following his example and we'll be living a life in that way that is so different but so needed today. So this morning I want to encourage you to continue to put your faith in God. To continue to put your faith in God and not let your hearts be troubled. It's it's easier said than done, I know. Yet when when we put our faith in God, when we say, okay God, I don't know what the answer is. I don't know what the future holds exactly. I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. I don't know how this week's going to play out. These are my needs. And I know, God, you know those needs. These are the needs of our community. And God, I know you know those needs as well. These are the needs of our country. These are the needs of our world. We put our faith and our trust in you for we know that that is where our true hope And our true lives come from. So this morning, as we continue in worship, as we continue to to seek out God's face, and our faith continues to grow, I encourage you to put your hope in God. To know that that's where your help comes from, and that's where your strength for daily life comes from. Would you pray with me this morning? Gracious God, thank you for all that you have done for us. Thank you for your continued presence in our lives, and we thank you that you continue to be with us in so many different ways. Lord, I just want to ask for your your grace and your strength for us today. Lord, for those hearts who are troubled uh, in, in a lot of different ways this morning, whether it be from uh, dealing with illness or fear uh, based around this this virus that we're all uh, battling against. Whether it be fear for the future of our economy. Whether it is uncertainty about what our future holds, uh, maybe not even related to this virus in our current situation. Maybe we're struggling with things of our past. Lord, help us to remember those words of Jesus says, do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in me. He says, do not worry, Jesus says, but seek first the kingdom of God. Lord, may our lives be filled with the fruit of the Spirit. May our lives be shown to be peacemakers full of grace and love to those around us. And Lord, as we come to the table this morning, as we come to the communion table, uh, across the miles we are gathered together in the body of Christ. 
And Lord, we ask all of this, that you continue to draw us together. In Jesus' name, amen. So this morning, I want to encourage you to, to take your communion elements, to gather them in front of you. I hope that you've got your, your bread and your, your juice uh, this morning as you, as you have prepared for communion this morning. And so this morning, I encourage you to, to gather that together. I had this morning a, a simple roll and drink uh, that will be used here at the church. Jesus says, as he gathered his disciples together in that upper room, he took a loaf of bread and he blessed it and he broke it. And he said, this is my body, which is given for you. Whenever you eat of it, remember me. Jesus then took a cup from the table, and he, again he held it before them, and he blessed it, and he said to them, this cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for the forgiveness of sin, my sin and yours. Whenever you drink of it, remember me. come to our time for our, our final song. Just a few short announcements. I wanted to encourage you to, to remember to tell your moms happy Mother's Day today uh, and to say thank you for what they've done, whether it's your natural mom or those who care for you. Be sure to recognize them, not just today, but each day uh, that you can see them and tell them you love them. Also this week, uh, we will be doing our food collection drive. It's currently, we're going to try to do it on Thursday, weather permitting. If you'd like to bring by some food for the food bank here in Dallas, we'll be here. Or if you'd like to bring it by during the week, we'll be glad to take it as the church office is open or give us a call or email and say, hey, I've got some food. Uh, I'd like to bring it by. But we'll be collecting food from about 10 to 2 on Thursday uh, here at the church. Uh, again, we'll be doing kind of a drive up op option. And uh, we encourage you to be a part of that as you can. Uh, so. Uh, if you have any questions, be sure to email uh, the church or me directly or, or feel free to give me a call and we'll be able to do that and help you out. Uh, if you have any other prayer requests, uh, we encourage you to, to uh, send those to the church and we look forward to praying for you. If you have any needs, uh, please also let us know. Uh, there's ways in which you can continue to give via the, the church website electronically or our app or to, to bring by or, or send in your, your tithes and offerings. We encourage you to continue to worship in that way each day. Uh, so will you join me in our, our closing song, uh, Thrive. It's a song that uh, talks about thriving in a worn and weary land because of our faith, because of the spirit that gives us life each and every day. This worn and weary land where many a dream has died. Like a tree planted by the water, we never will run dry. So living water flowing through, God we thirst for more of you. Fill our hearts and flood our souls with what is to know you and to make you know we lift your name on high shine like the sun
and make our just run and hide. We know we were made for so much more than ordinary lives. It's time for us to more than just survive. We were made to thrive. To your word we're digging deep to know our Father's heart. Into the word we're reaching out to show them who you are. So living water flowing through, God we thirst for more of you. Fill our hearts and flood our souls with what is to know you and to make you known, we lift your name on high. Shine like the sun, may darkness run and hide. We know we were made for so much more than ordinary lives. It's time for us to more than just survive. Unspeakable faith, unsinkable love, unstoppable, anything is possible. Joy, unspeakable faith, unsinkable love, unstoppable, anything is possible. Joy, unspeakable faith, unsinkable love, unstoppable, anything is possible. Just to know you and to make you known we live. Your name on high, shine like the sun, may darkness run and hide. We know we were made for so much more than ordinary lives. It's time for us to more than just survive. We were made to thrive. May you go and thrive in the world today because you are living, as Jesus says, in the way, the truth, and the life as you live in faith each day. May you go in peace. May you go in strength. And may you go to change the world. Amen. Just 